it's like, let's say you had a BBL with me and a BBL with somebody else. It's not the same thing. It's not like, okay, so I bought a Honda Civic, so it doesn't matter which dealership I go into to get my car fixed. Okay, you see, I'm like needing dough. Yeah. You can do both of your sides easily like this. Okay. okay. Like by rolling. The guy, I don't know what it's called. Hey guys, welcome back. We are back for our next IG live session. And today we are going to be talking about postal massage. This will be a session uh, mostly dedicated to our uh, liposuction patients that are stuck home because of COVID and unable to visit our massage therapist for uh, postal massages and for any other patient out there who may have had lipo or BBL or is considering thinking of uh, having surgery in the future and would like to know more about post-op care, post-op lipo massage. Hello. And, hey, Carrie, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us today. So yeah, for those of you that don't know Carrie, Carrie's our RMT, she works at our clinic and she runs our massage uh, program that we offer to our, out, out, uh, to our post-surgical patients. Now, the reason I uh, decided to do this IG Live with Carrie today is because everybody's stuck at home. Um, pretty much all over the world, unless you're in China, you're probably stuck at home. Uh, and so are our patients. And we have also patients that would normally be coming into the clinic getting their massages, but they're not. So what we'll try to do today is answer any questions you, may, you might have, and also ask Carrie to show us and demonstrate some techniques and some principles that you should be aware of if you're gonna be doing this on your own at home, because you're stuck. So yeah, Carrie, so I'll let you take stuff. over. Okay, uh, yeah, so I have, I have a few things to demonstrate first, just some um, tools that you might have in the house um, mm -hmm. that can help you, whether it's a baker's roller, muscle roller, um, I know you had some questions on a previous post about uh, some vibration massage, whether it's like a handheld um, device or whatever. So we'll cover a little bit of that. And then um, I have someone who I'm safely in quarantine with who uh, demonstrated or uh, agreed to be a body for me to demonstrate some techniques. So we'll get awesome. at that right after. Okay. Beautiful. So first, um, just some lotion and stuff that you might want to use. Um, this is a brand of coconut oil that is super, super, um, it's organic, it's thick, uh, huge benefits for the body for hydration. Um, and okay, if I may interrupt you, sorry, for us, it's flipped around, so it's, we can't read the label. Can you let us know what the label says? What, what, oh, what, okay. What it's so it's Nativa Organic um, Coconut Oil. It's completely virgin, organic. It's, like, it's a cooking oil. You can use it to cook. You can use it for anything. Okay. So you can get it in the grocery store, which is why I'm trying to show it that you know, anyone who's stuck at home still has access to get this. Um, okay. It provides super natural hydration to the skin. A really, it's thicker than a normal oil. So you're, it lasts a little bit longer than what, you know, your lotion would or whatever. Um, okay. If you're someone who prefers using Arnica in the early stages for the bruising, you can do so, but it doesn't, it's, it's more of an ointment that dissipates really quickly. So it's better to use an Arnica with the coconut oil. Um, and then also another option is just a little bit more expensive is the bio oil. Okay. Um, and you run through one of these like really, really quickly. So, um, it becomes an issue because it's pretty pricey. Um, okay. okay so that is good products for, uh, just out of curiosity, products. how much did yeah. you pay for that bottle of bio oil? Uh, I bought a few at once, so it was a little bit better. Yeah. But it's like 20 bucks. And the other one? The coconut oil yeah. is the same. It's like maybe $16 and it's a huge tub. Okay. So that's Some why more. it's like, exactly. So it'll just last a little bit longer. Okay. Um, okay, and so I have a few items here. So some of you might be a little handier and have like an actual muscle roller. I don't have mm -hmm. one in the house. So um, I'm using an actual baker's roller. So uh, for those of you who don't, and maybe you bake, you still have a benefit, okay? So just to demonstrate how you would use this, it spins on its natural um, axis or whatever. And you can use this. I wouldn't be using the ends. Some people try to use the ends to jab into yourself. And I feel like in the beginning, if you're on pain medication or if you, you know, have sensitive areas and you're not, you don't have that depth perception that I might have or someone who's trained might have, okay. I wouldn't be using the um, sharp edges. You want to keep to a flat surface like this. Um, so okay. I think you put a little bit lower and I'll show them. Sorry, I just tilted a little bit lower so you can see. Okay, so um, this would be a great, great tool to use on your rib cage if you're having any um, lumps or spots or even any kind of sensitivity like nerve sensitivity. 
Um, you can use this, mm -hmm. and I'm doing this all on my own. So you can do this on your own. Okay. You don't even need to have support at home. Um, and you can, I'm getting, just going to show you straight on here. I'm getting a bit of a hinge like this. Okay, so I'm staying in that hinge, and then I'm rolling up and down the side of my body like this, applying a little bit of pressure. Okay, now you're um, pushing. How much again. pressure? Like you're gonna. How hard should people be pushing? Um, they're they're giving a good amount of push. Like if you're just touching yourself superficially like this, you're gonna just tickle mm -hmm. yourself and maybe not be so beneficial. So you want to get like a half inch, an inch of depth into the body if possible. Like and put a little bit of pressure. Okay. In, when you're going against the ribs, you want to keep that pressure because the ribs are going to act as a barrier on the underneath side that you're compressing any kind of, you know, lumps or bumps against that can help to thin it out. Okay. So from here, you can do both of your sides easily like this. Okay. okay. Both sides. And then um, obviously you can get through the stomach. This is a harder area because of all the organs and, you know, all your internal intestines and stuff. You're not pushing that hard in here. So in that instance, I would probably pick up your speed a little bit just to do a light stimulation. Okay. Okay, this is gonna cause a little bit of blood flow, maybe some nerve stimulation, um, which can help you at home for sure. And then also, this is a good tool um, if you're someone who doesn't have support system at home because I'm able to get to my back all on my own. So I'm just gonna flip it behind my back this way and the same thing. So like all through those flank areas here like this that are, mm -hmm. you know, a, a typical problem area for some people, I'm still able to roll right through here all on my own. Okay. Just a little thought from my exercises with Jorge is sometimes for back pain and stretching, he uses a roll like this one to roll. And so what I would do is I would put it on the floor and kind of spin it. So would this be possible? Yeah. You know, it's like lie down on it and kind of use your body weight to roll yeah, on those. Absolutely. That, that's more of like a foam roller. And a lot of people probably have a foam roller in their house, which is super okay. handy. Same thing like you're saying. So you can manage the amount of pressure you have by holding your body weight in your feet, as okay. well as your back against the foam roller. So that, that's also a super handy tool if you have one of those at home. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to move on to the hand massagers. So this one that I have is um, more of a commercial grade, probably not something that most people are gonna be having at home and it's a little mm -hmm. bit intense. Um, the ones that you can order online are more of these like percussion type things. Um, so the vibration in the massage is actually great. It's gonna help to kind of get all the juices pumping, get all the fresh blood flow coming through. It's gonna help to soften up any of the areas that potentially are just staying stuck and stagnant. Um, mm -hmm. So that can help largely too. So caution with these products just um, through the abdomen area is again, because you have all the um, organs and intestines, and everything in there. I have had feedback that um, they get a little bit nauseous. So it's a little, it can cause some disruption in the body that's also not comfortable, even if it feels good. Nausea when they do the stomach or anywhere on the body? Sorry? Is the nausea coming when they're some massaging your tummy and the internal organs yeah. or like even More back so and love handles would create nausea? Yeah, no, it's not so much over here. If they're fresh out of surgery, um, any area can cause nausea just because of the overstimulation and they just okay. too much for the body. Um, but if you're like even a few weeks along or further, pretty much okay. any other area on the body is gonna be fine to work except for in the abdomen. You okay. can do it, it's just proceed with caution because you know everybody reacts differently and, and too much stimulation much give you, might give you an adverse effect. And talking about the abdomen, I want to make it very clear. If you had a tummy tuck, <clears throat> do not massage your tummy. There was a question I saw that went by asking, yeah. you know, massage with muscle tightening. If you had muscle tightening, means you had a tummy tuck. If you had a tummy tuck, do not massage your belly. Do not massage your belly at all. Um, you can do your lap handles if you have side liposuction, you can do your back or bra also if you liposuction those areas. But the muscles, the muscle repair and the skin on the tummy, do not massage. Yeah, and I would caution also um, with the tummy tuck patients that the vibration might be a little bit too much. So I might avoid this altogether. The hand mm -hmm. contact is going to be a little bit better for patients who had a tummy tuck. Yeah. You can and just control it a little better. There's a question about dry brushing. I have no idea what dry brushing is. What is dry yeah. brushing? Okay, so dry brushing is a, is a technique for nerve stimulation. So someone who's suffering from like a nerve loss or injury or something. And, and if I'm working with them to try to re-stimulate the nerves and reconnect kind of that brain body contact, okay. um, that's what a dry brush is for. Okay, so like it's, it's, it. it's uh, sensitization exercises. 
So that's exactly. not really massage. It's not a massage. It's no, no, no. for nerve pain, nerve hypersensitivity, or or numbness. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. if you're someone who's suffering um, a lot from uh, stimulation, where like if you put clothes on and it just gives you that shiver, chill kind of reaction, or if so you brush up against someone or somebody touches you even lightly, if yeah. you're having you know, that overstimulation problem where it's just too sensitive or burning, anything like that, the nerve stimulation is actually great for them. So would, this be, would this be something that would be recommended for people to do maybe during the first week after lipo? Well, they're hypersensitive, they're not ready for full massage, but maybe dry brushing, just like I tell yes. my patients to do sensitization exercises. Yeah, and so I've, okay. actually, um, I've actually asked a few patients who are suffering like mostly through the flank area. Um, okay. There is most people are going to know what this is. There's an exfoliation glove that you can get from shoppers. So again, something that you can get right now. Um, and you can put a glove on your hand that has like the bristles on it that okay. is going to help you. And all you have to do is gentle circulation, like the circular motions. Um, again, it's just going to cause all that nerve response. You're going to stimulate the nerve. And the faster you stimulate and regenerate normal nerve response, the quicker all of those uh, problematic symptoms are going to go away that are driving everybody crazy. Yeah after surgery <laughs> one little side so sensitization exercises or these dry brushings they can help with people that are hyper hypersensitive in some mm -hmm. cases not in most but very rarely hypersensitivity doesn't go away and persist or just mm -hmm. going away very slowly if that's the case talk to your doctor there's medication you can take uh, we prescribe to our uh, patient something called gabapentin it's a nerve medication for hypersensitive nerves irritated nerves it, mm -hmm. it just helps with the pain this non non pain pains and nerve pain to go away yeah right. um and so sorry i wanted to say also about the nerve stuff like a lot of people have this sensation of like brittle ripping skin just mm -hmm. while we're talking about it um uh, everyone's asking can i work out can i move even reaching you know in my cupboards it feels like i'm gonna rip it feels like my body's gonna rip um that is also a nerve problem it is your mm -hmm. physical body is not going to rip you're not going to hurt yourself um obviously we want to you know proceed with caution and use common sense in this scenario where you don't want to get yourself in that situation and then over exert or over stretch because yeah. you know it's just not worth the risk especially if you're a tummy tuck patient um but if you go through that nerve stimulation process which will be uncomfortable Mm -hmm. forewarning like it is not you're going to be very overwhelmed and it will be a lot to take in but it's better you push through and use a little bit of that gradually it doesn't have to be too much in one day um but it will subside quicker the problem is when people get the symptoms they stop touching they'll exfoliate or dry brush and then they'll stop because it's uncomfortable but you're not going to get any benefits from it if you stop okay. uh, blueberry uh, is asking you can massage tummy like after two months after two months you fully heal on your tummy but frankly, after a tummy tuck, there should be really no reason for you to be massaging your tummy. Um, Except for yeah. in the backside for the postural stuff, which is what we discussed. Is but like it's not the front, it's, it's the sides or the back. Right, because most people are very uncomfortable with, um, uh, they get like for their posture from being forward mm -hmm. to protect yeah. the tummy tuck and the incision. Yeah. Um, their posture suffers a lot. So you can massage to like the rib cage flank area um, yeah. to help with the postural stuff. Lastly, the, your best friend is heat. What this is, is a heating, This is a heating pad. I know you can't really see, okay. but <laughs> heating pad. Again, you can get this at Choppers. You can get it. Even some grocery stores have it in there in the um, like household item aisle. Yeah. If you have a bean bag at home, you can use that also. One that goes in the microwave. Mm -hmm. um, heat. I would wait until you're at least three weeks, but if you're at home and you're uncomfortable, you feel, um, you know, I, I hear some patients saying they got out of the car and they're just so stiff and, and just not comfortable, right? They just don't feel like they're in their own yeah. skin. Apply some coconut oil first um, and then put on a tank top or whatever you might put over top a t-shirt um, and then apply the heat for 10 just, to 15 just to minutes. You don't, you don't apply the coconut oil when you get out of the car, right? Just want to clarify. <laughs> No. <laughs> so when you're like at home at the end of the day, you're feeling stiff, everything's uncomfortable. Then you're going to apply some coconut oil and a tank top or t-shirt over top and then apply the heat to the affected area. So if it's your flanks, you know, obviously you can, you can put the heat on your back. And if it's mm -hmm. a bean bag, maybe you can lean against it to hold it in place so that you get mm -hmm. both sides at once. 
Um, ideally, you have a heating pad that you can lay over your abdomen or wrap around uh, your yeah. back and get more space. Um, but the, the heat is going to open up the pores so that the moisture from the coconut oil can get deeper. And then also it'll just have, it'll just intensify the effect. And so, open up the circulation so there's more blood flowing in. Exactly. More oxygen, more nutrients, everything mm -hmm. just becomes more alive. Yeah, most of the time it's like if people have been stagnant or they've been in the same position too long or anything, that, then they haven't had that blood flow coming through mm -hmm. um, because they've been sitting in the same position. So they feel a stiff or hardening. Nothing is reacting. You're not having a poor reaction. This is just normal. You know, maybe even nutritionally, they didn't have enough water or they had too much sodium that day. You know, different reasons for fluctuation, but the heat will help to bring fresh blood flow that will take that away instantly. What I'd like to sort of reinforce is sort of the basic concepts. One, heat. Heat is good. Opens up circulation. You want, to, you want your tissues to be warm before you start massaging. And two, the coconut oil or any other oil. Oils will soften up the skin so when you're massaging and touching, you're not abrading the skin because uh, if you go directly on dry skin, you, you, you develop abrasions and more bruising than if you use a coconut oil or some other oil to, to um, oilify the, the surface. Yeah, and, and just to second that, the it, you'll feel very brittle. Like the massage will be very uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, if you don't apply any kind of moisture. Okay, so um, again, I also just wanted to mention that the techniques that I'm going to demonstrate now um, mm -hmm. are all on the YouTube video. So on your YouTube channel, we have the video of massage techniques. Um, I'm going to demonstrate the same ones now, but if it's something people want to follow up to. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, you should get directly to that video that we've created with Carrie to demonstrate her techniques for post-op patients. And okay, so 606 is asking, can you <laughs> self-massage standing up or lying down? It doesn't matter what, you, what position you're in. Uh, you could be doing it standing, you could be doing it lying down. Uh, often when you massage, you're sort of squeezing, doing a squeezing maneuvers, or you want to push. And if you're pushing, you want to make sure that you have some good support. So either if you're pushing down and you're lying down, your, your bed acts like a back support, or if you're standing, lean against a, a wall, as sort of acts like sort of a backup against what you're pushing. Did I answer that right, Carrie? Yes. I think that was. <laughs> now I noticed some light turned on. Is there some sort of an infrared light or something that you're using to warm up your patient? Um, I don't have it on right now, but that is not a bad thing. Like infrared light is really good. If you're someone who has access to an infrared sauna or anything like that, it is also a huge benefit to recovering. If somebody has a sauna or some heat room or something like that, would you recommend going there to warm up the whole body before they do the massage? Absolutely. Is that a good idea? Absolutely. So I often tell everybody, because it's the most simple thing, everybody takes a shower, take a hot shower. Um, you know, if you have to have two showers a day, then so be it, you have two showers, but it's at your fingertips at home. Um, a hot shower in the morning and then a good application of coconut oil or whatever oil is your choice um, mm -hmm. is perfect. Again, the pores are open. Your skin has its natu natural moisture, so you're not ripping into brittle skin. Um, you know, when you have a hot shower and you get that kind of sweat feeling, sometimes it takes a while to even cool down after your shower. Like, all of these are really good things. And when you're doing your massage at home, I know some people, uh, some patients have kind of, you know, been in a panic. Um, but you want it to become red. You want it to become itchy. You want it to become all of these things because it's a, it means that you have the body reacting. To what you're doing which means you're actually doing something of benefit mm -hmm. so don't like if it starts to get itchy or red or kind of fire like or hot to touch all of these are very good things they are only temporary and they will go down as soon as you stop touching okay okay so i'm just going to demonstrate first so i've applied a little bit of coconut oil here and right now i'm using the flats of my knuckles here okay, okay just the flat part so i'm not using the tip of the knuckle here i'm using the flat and this is just a general flush. So this is just a technique to kind of get the blood going a little bit, um, move any fluid that might be hanging around, and uh, just kind of start the body for, for contact so that, you know, so everyone's comfortable and not just jumping in. So let me interrupt you really quickly. You, you put a good, made a good point. I want to go on a little tangent. Moving around fluid. So for some of our patients that are still fresh out of surgery, massaging, you want to sort of milk it down towards if you have a drain towards your drains or towards your incisions just to get all the fluid down because your body shortly after surgery is producing fluid so go ahead take, take it off no, that's right that's 100 percent. and and I, that's another concern that a lot of patients have is they can feel like some patients are aware and can feel where the fluid is well if you feel it there 
like let's we want to move it we don't want it to be pulled in one area so massage is something that can help with that obviously if you're concerned always contact the doctor and have a follow-up um you know that's your best way to handle it but when you're at home try not to panic about it and see if you can move it a little bit so that it stimulates the body to absorb it exactly. and move it through the body. Yeah, so most, again, fluid just, collection, <laughs> most fluid collections do get absorbed by your body if it becomes too big then it may need to be drained by putting it in a needle into it or putting a little drain but most little fluid collections are not a big deal your body will absorb it yeah exactly Okay, so I'm just warming up the area so that she can handle a, a little bit more aggressive technique. Um, there's a few common ones that I use on everybody. And mm -hmm. if, if you're someone who's in pain or feeling sensitive or feel like, you know, I can't cause this kind of pain to myself, never stop touching yourself because of that. Like never stop massaging the body or the affected areas because you feel discomfort. Um, mm -hmm. There is some pain that you don't want to cause yourself, but in this instance, it's usually something that you need to just work through so that you can train the body to heal. Yeah. Um, so yeah. instead of stopping the massage altogether, maybe reduce the pressure a little bit, look at the angle, make sure you're working in circles so you're not directly hurting only one you know, area. <clears throat> you have a more general approach but don't stop touching yourself. You have to work through the discomfort a little bit so that you can actually heal. Mm -hmm. Again, so I'm working with the flats of my knuckles here. You can use the base of your palm and the tips of your fingers. You just wanna be careful in the very early stages because if you are really inflamed and you're poking, you can kind of leave some marks and indentations which we don't wanna do. So I just generally say flats of the knuckles, base of the palm, and always in a circular motion so that we're getting a bigger general area. I know last week when we were talking about it, we talked about the pincer grip, P-I-N-C-E-R, if you're- so it's, like, it's, it's like pinching, right? Exactly, like... yeah. So we're actually just gonna literally pinch. And so here I am pinching, okay? Can you see this? And when you're pinching, are you feeling for something or you're just blindly pinching? Uh, okay, so technically, like when you're, when you're with a professional in their uh, opening, uh, massage techniques mm -hmm. they're they're kind of mapping out the body so what I'm doing is when I'm doing this general flush I'm going okay where am I feeling resistance oh it's a little stiff over here it's a little stiff on this side maybe I feel a nodule near the rib cage I'm kind of mapping it out in the early stages to know okay so for this case we're going to say that we have a nodule right here in the center of the abdomen and, and what I mean by nodule is something that you feel that's firmer. So like a denser tissue, something that you can feel the edges around. Um, and I'm gonna get that area. And, and this is what people, people online talk about fibrosis. So it's a little areas of fibrotic tissue, which is scar tissue or a lump, or maybe a little extra fat. So it's, it's, it's a palpable little structure underneath the skin. Exactly. So. Here I have it in between my fingers, okay? So my mm -hmm. index finger and my thumb are holding onto that nodule on either side of it, and I'm pinching and moving back and forth. So ideally, you're elevating away, so you can see that I'm pulling upwards. So I have, yep. I have the nodule in my hand, I'm pulling it up away from the body, and then I'm manipulating back and forth. I'm gonna go to the side so you can see the movement that I'm doing, you're going this way, okay? So I'm pulling away from the body and I'm moving back and forth like this until the skin falls out. And what, what are you trying to do? What's the purpose of what you're trying to do here? Um, so we're trying to break down the denser areas. Okay, so if, if, if you have a dense spot here, now they come in different uh, sizes, shapes, everything. So it's not specific to one person or one outcome. Um, you could have a thick, long ridge. You could mm -hmm. have a nodule that's a very specific point that you can feel all edges. Um, you can have something that doesn't really move. You can have something that kind of soft and rolls with you. Either way, if it's thicker than what your normal skin is, we don't want it there. We want to break it down. Yeah. Um, so, you, so if I understand correctly, you're trying to pinch it just to squish it. But at the same time, with this pushing and pulling, you're trying to free it up so it doesn't get stuck to the deep layers. It doesn't exactly. become a solid, immobile mass. Yeah, exactly. So because yeah, scar, scar tissue tends to contract. And if there's a little lump, um, it, it'll become stuck and you may, sometimes people look good when they stand straight, but when they move, you have these areas that are not moving because they're scarred down. And by pulling and stretching them, you're trying to stretch the scar tissue so that it's not stuck in the same spot. So it, it, it softens yeah, exactly. up the area and, and, and mobilizes it. Go on. 
when you are able also to elevate upwards, you're kind of working from the bottom up. When you're yeah. massaging and only kind of doing these circular motions mm -hmm. on top, we're only working with a superficial layer. So that's why this is a more aggressive and much more effective approach if you can handle it so that mm -hmm. we're actually getting the problem from the bottom and yeah. separating fibers from, the, from underneath it. So I'm pulling mm -hmm. and separating the contractures right in the body. Yeah. Exactly. Now this is, yeah. So this is a, a sample model. She doesn't actually have fibrosis. Right. But sometimes when people have fibrosis and they have these lumps, you could feel a lump or sometimes you can have a little indent. That's the scar tissue kind of being pulled down. So by pushing and lifting it up, you're taking this adhesion on the bottom and lifting it up so it's not being stuck down. So you want to pinch and, and take this indented skin and make it evert. Exactly. That is a perfect uh, demonstration. Um, and also, I just want to say that because she's not having any issues right now, it's very hard to grip onto her. But if there is a contracture present, if there's a problem you're working with, it won't be that hard because the substance is thicker and you'll actually have something to grip. So okay. you'll, you'll have something that you can pinch and pull and you'll feel the fibers that are stuck releasing. If you mm -hmm. feel any popping, if you feel any rolling, snapping, any of these things, all amazing. It means that it's working really well. Um, I always tell, when, when I, I get excited about it, which might be an issue, but that's another conversation. But um, it feels like bubble wrap. Right? Yeah. So when and you start going so, through it, it's like satisfying. Yeah, it's it's very satisfying when you pop it and you feel something let go. And um, when I do this in clinic, it usually brings a tears to the patient's mm -hmm. eyes that I'm sorry. But if it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right, especially in the early stages. And I know we, I, I, I push for pain. Carrie's like, no, don't, don't make it too painful. But honestly, if, if you're being too gentle, you, you're, you're not doing anything and you're just allowing to heal and solidify in place. And then by the time it's no longer painful and you start working it hard, it becomes a lot more difficult to work on. After liposuction, your body is very malleable. Mm -hmm. And as time goes on, things become more and more solid. And the more solid they are, the harder the massage is. So if you start massaging early on, everything is like, like butter. It's super, super soft. And the longer you wait, the harder it becomes. Okay, so um, if you're someone who does have support at home, you can do this to yourself, but it's a little bit harder. Um, a common problem area through the flanks and the rib cage for some uh, scar tissue and adhesions to form. Um, just because of the bony structures and the things that it can stick to. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate if you can, can you see okay, Martin there? Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm in between her ribs right now. So I okay. have a rib here and I have a rib on this side, okay? So I'm going in between her ribs, which is not comfortable for the most people, even when you haven't had surgery. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so this is called rib raking, okay? So I'm actually going down with my fingers. You kind of find the groove and you go in between and I'm just going back and forth, back and forth like this because the shallow um, <clears throat> divot in between the rib cage is a common area where things can stick and you know, just become messy. So definitely an area you don't wanna leave. And if you do have support at home, um, try to use them to get in through the rib cage like this. Okay. Okay. And again, make sure that you, if you're not only going in one direction, you want to go both directions. So if I'm going to go down this way, I'm going to pull right back up through there. Okay. Cause we don't, because you are malleable at this time, we don't want to be pushing things so that you end up with like, you know, a lump of tissue somewhere. So just make sure you're going back and forth. So in the early stages after liposuction, your body is malleable. If you guys watch our Snapchats, I do what I call safe lipo. Safe is not safe. It's an acronym. Separation, aspiration, fat equalization. And so what I do is the first step is separation. I break up the fat. I use my little cannula to vibrate and break the lobules of fat. Then I go and suck it out. Some fat is left behind. And I go back and do the FE of the safe, which is fat equalization. So I go back again, break up little lobules of fat that freely just freely kind of move around. Now they're sitting there freely. They're kind of held in place, but they, they are mobile. And if you massage them, you could potentially move them around. So the early stages, it's good to massage because it's malleable. You can, you can, you correct any little lumps and mumps that you may find. But at the same time, if you're not doing it correctly, you could be like plowing it and creating a mold of fat that you kind of push from one place to another. So be gentle, be careful. Uh, if you're one of our patients, you're gonna come and see Carrie or one of her associates in our massage clinic. And the first session of patients have a more educational massage itself. When you'll, you'll be taught the techniques of what to do and how to do things. Yeah, exactly. 
Um, okay, so uh, just kind of a continuation on from the pincer grip, which is what we first started with. Mm -hmm. um, so the pincer grip itself is something where you're going to pinch and elevate and kind of just stay in that position. We might get a little shaking going back and forth, but we're not moving. The mm -hmm. extension of that would be skin rolling. Um, so you're going to start in the same type of way where you're pinching the skin. And this is done, off, you can do it with one hand, but um, when we're working in a larger area, you, you want to do two hands so that you can grip it. I mean, you can even do it, I can demonstrate to myself. Unfortunately, you want to get into the position you don't want, but you want to create those rolls. All the okay. rolls you don't want to have, you want to create them temporarily while you're massaging because after, after surgery, you're so tight and things are healing, but we still want to be effective. So yeah. you want to kind of get a loose area of the skin, whether it be on the ribs, I can grab to the side, whether in the abdomen, obviously I can grab here, same thing in the side. The back is a little bit harder. You would use that circular general flush technique here, but anything okay. through, like the waistline through the abdomen here, the flanks, um, you can do the skin rolling, okay? okay? So you're gonna grab the skin the same like you would in a pincher grip. So you can see the thickness that I have, okay? Like I have okay. a good amount of skin in here, okay? And then I'm actually rolling. So you're, so you're almost like plowing. So literally like you're in dough, okay? Do you see, I'm like kneading dough. Yeah. Just like this, okay? And you can do, you can pinch going in opposite directions like this. You can stay in one steady line where you're just kind of rolling through. But do you see the movement in the skin right here, how much we're getting? I'm yeah. actually pushing this thumb in and rolling it. So this is yeah. where that bubble wrap sensation really comes in because if you get a good amount of skin, you can roll right through and feel the changes you're doing as you're rolling through, right? And so if I'm working on the back, so you can work from the outside in the inside out doesn't matter. You can start from the ribs down to the flank. Whatever gives you the most malleable area that you can grab the most is going to be your mm -hmm. best bet. And the same on the stomach. You can work from the side into the belly button, up, down, doesn't matter. Okay. So you're wanting to get this. You see this rolling right through here? Mm -hmm. Now, what if someone has ridges? Like sometimes people have lines that they may notice as either result of the lipo itself, that you've sort of lipoed out the line, or over time they've developed faults. How would you deal with those? Sorry, the line is where? Let, let, let's say someone creates a line. Um, it's, it's either a fold or some sort of indentation. Like from so a binder you... or something. Exactly, yeah. Okay, okay. So how would you deal with that? So in the beginning stages, not everyone is gonna be able to do this, which is why I'm saying it's an extension of the pincer grip. So, you know, don't panic if you can't do this right now, but it is your goal. You definitely okay. want this to be your goal. So people that, you know, everybody's different. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Everyone's healing is completely different. So some people are skin rolling at four weeks. Some people are skin rolling at eight or 10 weeks. Okay. You know, it takes that long for the elasticity to come back, the moist, moisture to come back into the skin, whatever it might be. You know, don't panic at the timeline. Just make it your goal to get there. Eight to 10 sounds long. Is that okay? Um, is there anything people can do to sort of maybe get to it earlier? Because not, yeah. not being a massage therapist, is listening to eight to 10 weeks, I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's a long time. That's, that's going to be pretty solid by the time you get there. It's very, very real though. Um, and this comes down to when people try to cheat us and tell us they're doing five massages a day, but I know they're not because I can't touch them as much as I'd like to. I can't be as aggressive as I'd like to, um, which is why it's so crucial. Like for us at our clinic, we have high volume. We're seeing you once a week. You know, it's not something that we can provide more than that. So it is up to you to make sure you're maintaining, you know, in between the sessions that you're applying the heat, you're mm -hmm. moistening the skin, you're applying the coconut oil, you know, whatever it might be that you can do at home, creating that quick flushing sensation so that fresh blood flow is keeping things soft until you get to us. Um, you have to commit at home or the results aren't gonna be the same. You know, in different times, some people are fortunate enough to go multiple times, but especially now, I mean, the buck is on you. You have to yeah. commit to it at home. You gotta do your homework. It doesn't happen by itself. 100%. So yeah, so we'll just, I'll just review it really quickly. So flats of the knuckles, base of the hand here, you're gonna go in circular motions, okay? And this can get your entire body, okay? Entire body. Mm -hmm. You can do it over your rib cage, your back, your stomach. I mean, even on my own, I can reach my own rib 
and hip. Okay, again, I have a bit of a hinge here so that I'm accentuating. Okay. okay. Same thing over here. I'm hinging like this to create a roll so that I can grab and roll through my own stomach. Okay, mm -hmm. I can do all of this on my own, no problem at all. I don't need support. The only thing you're gonna need support for, I mean, I can still, my hands are a little more trained, I know what I'm doing. Um, so it might be difficult for some, but you can get in between your ribs on your own. But ideally, if you do have support, that's a technique that you, you know, lean on a friend to help you with or family member, whoever it might be, um, mm -hmm. to get in, in between the ribs and going back and forth, okay? And then we have the pincer grip. Where and also, we spoke about the roller. So those are the came a little bit later. You can use like a regular, I don't know, um, kitchen roller. <laughs> Like my rolling the guy, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you can be creative. You can find things in the house that'll work if you don't have these items. Yeah. Be creative, it's fine. The only thing you want to think about is not leaving indentations if you're someone who's still suffering from inflammation. You don't want to be pushing and imprinting and leaving marks. But other than that, go for what it. About, what about um, those, you know, all those massage toys that people sell on shopping channels, whatever? That they, they create heat. They typically see also like a triangular shape with three points that are like little three dots. Like, <laughs> is that a a good thing to use, or or is it useless, or is it harmful? It's not useless. It's not useless. I I don't think someone is going to do damage by using it. But you know, I I don't have a roller at home probably for a reason. You know, like we're talking about desperate times right now. We're obviously yeah. looking at um, doing what we can given the circumstance. So. You know, are you going to cause damage? No. Are you going to have a huge benefit? No. But is it doing something? Yes. You know, it's better than nothing. That's awesome, Kate. Is there anything else that people can do when they're at home? No. I mean, the key is to soften, keep things soft, and keep fresh blood flow. As long as you're maintaining any of those things, things are going to stay in shape that when you get mm -hmm. to myself or when you get to whatever therapist you're working with, that we can still manipulate and, and do some corrective techniques that will help you out. Um, cause right now, you know, yeah. you're on your own. You've really got to keep it soft. And one thing we haven't really mentioned yet is this is a slow process. Postal massage is a slow process that you will have to do for months and months. Yeah. So if after a few days, after a couple of weeks, you're not seeing much of a difference, don't give up, keep at it. You yeah. gotta keep going. Yeah. And to touch on that also, another thing is that, um, everybody is totally different. Some people have no need and so they brush it off, but you cannot listen to them. Everybody is different. So you have to take your own surgery into your own hands. I mean, yeah. the body also doesn't heal evenly. So people are always like, oh my God, you know, I have this, there's this fibrosis, what's going on over here? I have this ridge, what did I do, right? And then we, we focus on here and we work it out and then all of a sudden it's no problem. And oh no, what's this on my right side, you know? The body doesn't heal perfectly proportionately, you know, things are gonna come and they're gonna go. So you have to work really hard on the mental emotional commitment to it and know that it's a long process. You know, you're gonna get there, but it is a day by day, step by step process. It could take us a few weeks to work on one problem and then we start another, you know? It's gonna take time. One other point I wanna make is understand that everybody does things a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Each surgeon does their surgery differently. They have different postal protocols. And then the corresponding massage is a little bit different. Uh, I just had a message from, um, from a follower who contacted a surgeon somewhere else, uh, who's a very good surgeon, has great results, but this surgeon told her that he doesn't do postal massage, so doesn't recommend them. D different opinion, and, and I've seen his results that are very, very good. In my hands, I, think, I find that postal massage is very helpful. It does give you a nice and smooth results, so I do recommend that people do it. But again, um, if you had surgery elsewhere, please speak to your clinic, to your surgeon, and follow their post op instructions because you know the instructions we give you here are sort of general good instructions but we don't exactly know what happened to you what type of technique or surgery you had done and your particular surgery or technique may benefit from a different post op care than what we're talking about here so always please speak to your doctor um you know i i always you know i get questions from patients that have surgeries elsewhere asking for post op instructions and uh, unfortunately i can't answer you one i don't know you two i don't know what was done and best thing is, you know, you've trusted your surgeon to do your surgery. So trust them to guide you through recovery. Um, if you have questions, don't put it out there to the internet, you know, asking other people, they don't speak to your surgeon. He or she knows the best, what would be the best care for you? Yeah, just touching on that quickly, a lot of patients come to me with, I read this on Real Self, I read this, you know, I know that this is an online world and there's so much information, but 
sometimes reading all of that is where you're getting all your conflicting stories, right? So yeah. you're creating chaos in your head over what you should do when you can nip it in the bud and email your surgeon, you know, exactly, exactly. like you said, trusted them to operate, trust them to recover, you know? It's, and it, I'll just say, you know, like as uh, from, from, you know, I've, I've seen this also, but I've also from a personal point of view, I, I see my own patients online putting out questions to the world, you know, okay, this is what's happening to me. What should I do? Asking out of dolls or asking out of patients. Like, I'm right here. Ask me. You know, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to help. I'm not trying to ignore you or we're not trying to hide the truth from you. Speak to your surgeon. They probably can give you the better advice than online people that really don't know what's going on with you. And, and maybe their experience doesn't necessarily apply to your experience. Yeah. And, and also touching on that, if I have a patient come to me who, like, if I've seen patients outside of um, the clinic, right? And they have different surgeons and and they say, well, what about this? And what about this? And this person does it this way. You can't, me as a therapist, I'm willing to speak for myself, but it's general advice that's really good and you should listen to it. But, you know, if someone comes to me from a different surgeon, I don't know them. I don't know the surgeon. I don't know their practices. I will do what's safe within my means. But if you have specific questions that need specific answers, I always refer back to the doctor because that's yeah. not my place. It's a little bit of a misunderstanding or misconception people have out there. Surgery, is, is an art and there's a lot of variation in it. So it's like, let's say you had a BBL with me and a BBL with somebody else. It's not the same thing. It's not like, okay, so I bought a Honda Civic, so it doesn't matter which dealership I go into to get my car fixed or have any problems. No, you, you didn't buy a Honda Civic, you bought a car. Somewhere you may have bought a Honda Civic, some might have bought a, a Mercedes, two different cars. You're gonna take a Honda Civic to a Mercedes dealership for post-op care and you don't gotta take a Mercedes to a Honda dealership to be fixed up. You take Mercedes to Mercedes and Civic to a Civic. Mm -hmm. So the same thing. Each surgeon is a little bit different. Each surgeon has slightly different post-op care. They know their patient and post-op recovery best. Those are the best people to, to look for your post-op care. And know your surgeon and know what they say. Ask lots of questions because yeah. if someone out there is telling you to do something that goes against what your surgeon says, it probably shouldn't be done. Exactly. And I'm gonna say not probably, I mean, you shouldn't, but you know, sometimes, you, you yeah, you, you put your life in your surgeon's hand. You, you yeah. trust your surgeon to do the surgery. Trust them to take care of you in recovery as well. Yeah. Yeah, and just okay. quickly, I want to touch on this. I know we did really quickly last time, but um, again, just a reminder that we are not touching anywhere where fat was transferred. Yes. We, we are so only if you had fat put to your butt, do not massage your butt. That being said, one of the common complaints I've heard from people that have fat houses, sometimes they feel the fat house feels a little tight on your butt. Um, if you have a properly measured and applied faha, you may feel like it's tight, but it's okay. It's not going to damage you. But do not massage your bum. If you have fat transfer to your breast, don't massage your breast. If you have fat transfer to your lips or facial, uh, facial uh, fat transfer, don't touch your face because initially as it's soft, one, you can either kill it or two, you can kind of push it and displace it and create all kinds of problems. Even a soft touch like a manual lymph drainage massage, do not touch the area. Um, yes. If the surgeon tells you not to touch the fat transfer, then you don't touch the fat transfer, period. So just along the same lines, pay attention. Make sure you are taking charge of your own health care the same we do in any situation. You're responsible for your body and your results, so just make sure you commit to it. Beautiful. Anything else, Gary? Anything else you would like to add? No, I think that's good. Thank you very much. Thanks for the demonstration. Yeah, no Thanks problem. to all of you guys that, that tuned in. If we haven't answered your question, I think I've done our best to answer questions, but if you haven't, please DM us. I'll do my best to answer questions or leave them in comments and uh, we'll go from there. And Carrie, thank you very much again. No problem. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye.